Hey y'all, it's Anne. So, um, when I asked for suggestions for K-pop 101, uh, one of my favorite commenter commenters uh, said this. So, I am going to be talking about uh, K-pop companies today. Now, um, there are actually probably like hundreds of um, K-pop entertainment companies, but um, there are some that you will hear about more than others because they are bigger and more successful. There are the uh, big three, which are the three um, most successful and have the probably the most amount of groups as well as the uh, most profit. They're, they are SM Entertainment, YG Entertainment, and GYP Entertainment. Um, other notable entertainment companies are FNC Entertainment, Cube Entertainment, Cletus Entertainment, uh, Starship, Starship Entertainment, and DSP Media. Um, now, like, in, like, how a K-pop idol becomes a K-pop idol is a lot different than how an American singer or celebrity would become a singer or celebrity. Um, uh, most of the time, companies have auditions for idols, or they will have scouts who um, will scout someone and if they are good. SM is one of the ones that is known for being a scout um, company that scouts because SM tends to look for very good looking people and then um, cultivate their talent while um, other companies look for talent and cultivate the face. Um, a story actually um, when Lu Han, former EXO member and former member of SM Town, um, was being scouted. He ran away from the person that was trying to scout him because he thought he was going to get kidnapped. Um, but yeah, most likely they to become a K-pop idol you will go through auditions or being scouted by a company. And then um, if you are accepted for a trainee, then you train with that company for as many years as they want you to, um, they are the ones that decide if you are going to be a solo artist or if you're going to be in a group. And if you're in a group, your group could change. Um, you could, like, you could start in one group and then they'll move you to another or to another or just um, other things. Like, and sometimes it'll happen like right before a debut. Um, Hyun Sung of Beast was supposed to be in um, Big Bang, actually, and um, Kido of Top Dog was originally a member of Bangtan Boys. But, um, yeah, and see, the trainee system, um, I see it sort of as kind of like the ancient Japanese, or the, the ancient Japanese geisha system, or the medieval European courtesan system where um, a mentor, employer, or madam, or pimp, or whatever, would um, take someone, they would train them, and then the person that they trained, their protege, would um, owe them money. And um, when they, they wouldn't own the money for their for like the training fees, the classes and whatnot, and they would have to pay back the uh, the money with their work, um, which is how it works with K-pop as well. Because once an idol debuts, they don't get a lot of them. They don't get most of the money from their. Um, you know, their sales or whatnot, a lot of the money goes to the higher-ups or it goes to paying off that idol's debt that they owe the company for promotions and whatnot and, and you know, for the training and stuff. So, and um, a lot of companies, they only see their uh, idols as cash cows. Um, that's pretty much, they are, they don't, a lot of companies uh, really don't care about the music itself. They'll just make music that is popular at that moment. 
or trendy. They, um, they just want to make money. That's the point of the company. That's really the point of all K-pop. It, of K-pop itself is, or any entertainment industry or any industry that, for that matter, is to make a profit. And the companies put in a lot of time and money and effort in training idols, and so they have to make a profit from the idol they train. I guess. I don't know if this is making any sense. Is it? But yeah, um, let's move on to some other topics that are actually kind of better, but they, like it's about companies, but like happier stuff. So um, companies or labels, um, the people in them, they usually don't uh, collaborate with people outside their label, and their labels kind of have a little fandom name for themselves or a little thing like there's for SM there's SM Town for YG it's YG Family JYP JYP Nation uh, United Cube stuff like that um, and I love those kind of joint things and I love it when um, idols from you know the companies feature on each other's tracks like um, members that, like DOFXO um, featured on a track for FX. Um, let's see, uh, another great example, Ilhuna of B2B um, uh, featured on not only a song for Hyanna, but a song for Gina, another uh, Cube Entertainment um, label mate. Um, yeah. So you're probably wondering, okay, there are all these different companies, um, like, is there any difference to the company itself? Like, does a company have a particular musical style they do? Um, FNC is a more musician-based group. Um, most of their groups do play instruments. Actually, I think all their groups do, but... AOA, their girl group, is more of a dance-oriented group. Um, YG has roots in hip-hop and rap, and they really, really um, excel at rap and hip-hop, but they do have other types of artists. Um, JYP Entertainment has a little bit of a soul influence, a little bit of R&B influence, I think. And um, SM, um, it is very pop, but SM Entertainment has a lot of, um, I, I would think, um, electronic, um, or dance track, um, influences in them. Uh, yeah. Um, and the, uh, companies themselves have different rules and basically, uh, different, you know, things that you have to do to be in each company. Um, if I was in a company myself, I probably would want to be in JYP, and I'm saying that because I like JYP's musical style better, the best out of all of them, and, um, like, I just, I honestly probably would feel more comfortable in JYP than in any other of them. Um, yeah. And, you know, some companies have a no dating rule. Um, some companies have a rule where you can date at a certain age. Just honestly depends on the company and whatnot. And the thing is, you have to, when you join the company, you sign the contract. It's not when you're about to debut you sign the contract. It's when you join the company. And you gotta really, like, those contracts can be hard. Um, they have a, uh, they are known as slave contracts, especially for DSP Media and SM Entertainment. Um, that is because it seems like slavery because you are given, you have to work for the company for so many years and get so little money and you're treated very poorly. Um, this is actually not a fun topic for me to talk about, I am sorry. But, yeah, that's 
It, um, like I said, the companies, yes, they're out there to make music and fun, happy music and good times, but they're also there to get money. It's, that's all pretty much what it boils down to. But that's pretty much what I have to say about uh, K-pop companies. Um, how about uh, if y'all have any more ideas for uh, K-pop 101, please let me know in this in the uh, comments. Um, just let me know. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye, y'all.